myself, I know you guys know who I am, but we may have someone on Facebook or um, YouTube that will um, be watching later on. I'm Jaron Holmes. I'm on the Deacon Board. Um, we've got a slate of things going on today. We will have one of our own, um, David Adkins, who's also on the Deacon Board, will be bringing our message. But we will have some um, remarks from our pastor, Pastor Jay. Um, and before we start, um, my prayer is that we, um, we've ca we cast the cares of the world away just for this moment that we've set aside to worship. And could we just take a moment of silence to just prepare our hearts, our soul, our minds for worship, to reflect on the freedom that we have, that we, as Daddy says so many times, that we, we take for granted. Um, there were lives that, were, that um, suffered and were lost because of that. Um, this is the weekend of 911, and we know the impact that that brought upon us as a nation, and it brought us closer. Um, so let's just take a moment of silence to prepare our hearts and soul for, for worship this morning. Okay, let's worship, let's worship. I do have a couple of announcements. Um, our second COVID clinic, um, we'll have that today um, out in the back. Um, even if you haven't signed up, um, just um, go back there and we'll get you all signed up, get you vaccinated. If it's somebody that you know, family, loved one, coworker, friend who hasn't been vaccinated, call them. Um, We'll be out there today. Also, next Sunday at the 11 o'clock hour, there will be a special call business meeting um, to elect the slate of officers um, for the next um, next year's um, church year. So let's see, once again, let everybody know it will be a special business meeting at the 11 o'clock hour to vote on the slate of teachers, uh, Sunday school teachers for next year. Um, any other announcements? I think Reggie may have a couple announcements. Eh, Esther's coming up as well. I know with everything going on in the news about Afghanistan and a lot of the Afghanis um, being brought to America, um, Melanie Stewart and I had a conversation the other week, and she works at Fort Lee, and so I know a lot of them have been taken to Fort Lee um, as well, and um, they are being housed there for, for the time being. And I was asking her if she knew if there were any needs, um, and of course, as always, there is. So I have a list, I uh, apologize, I don't have a lot of uh, copies made. I'll try to get some more before service lets out. But if anyone, if there is a desire in your heart to help these, um, as they refer to them as our Afghan guest, um, please bring, um, there's a, a whole lot of needs, um, especially for babies. Um, I know right now they're critical for um, new infant clothes, newborn to 24 months, baby formula um, for one plus, critical needs and baby cereal. Um, they're also looking for a lot of women and girl clothes, um, the usual, our basic needs, toiletries and all. And so there's a whole list. So again, if you are interested, um, I'm going to put a tote out in the foyer um, one day this week. And if you're interested, please drop some things in next Sunday or the next week. It'll be there for a few weeks. And um, I will see that Melanie gets those things and, and she will... Um, turn them in over at Fort Lee. And um, from her and from me, we say thank you. Good morning, Samaria. Uh, and following Darren's lead, my name is Reggie Stewart, and I'm the church moderator 
for those who may not know me. And um, wanted to make an announcement about uh, worship service uh, next Sunday. So we're going to take that trial run that I mentioned uh, last Sunday about bringing our pop-up chairs and sitting on and around the pavilion, weather permitting, for worship service next Sunday. So we'll have Sunday school as usual, but then the worship service, we're going to gather around the pavilion uh, and have the worship service there, as we said, just as a trial run. Hopefully we won't need to go back outside, but just as a trial run to see uh, how that works. Or in, your vehicles. or in your vehicles. Thank you, Pastor Jay, for continuing to remind me. He reminded me last week, and I forgot it again. So uh, just keep that in mind. Bring your pop-up chair um, so you, we can sit around the pavilion and worship. Thank you. Okay, um, Angie and Pete are here with us from uh, North Dakota and here for a special occasion. I ask if y'all want to bring greetings from T.P. Waka. Good morning. Uh, good morning. Good to be here. Thanks for your prayers, your continued prayers for us out there. Um, and some of you may not know, but Pastor Boots broke his hip um, a couple weeks ago, and he's in rehab now. Um, but Continue to pray for him as he recovers. Um, as you know, rehab is painful, it's slow, and some days are tough. And so he, he's experienced all those extremes. Um, some days he's up, some days he's down. Um, but continue to pray for Pastor Boots. But um, we do cover your prayers um, for our, our ministry out there uh, as we seek to do what God wants us to do. Um, and he's calling us to do some things now that... Um, you know, we're not quite comfortable with, we don't feel we're qualified to do, um, but um, just be in prayer for those types of things. We'll, we'll give you more information later as we um, try to walk in obedience, um, but it's, it's good to be out there, and, and it's good, more importantly, to have a church family back home that we know who prays for us, who supports us, and we know who's there for us, and so we're just so grateful um, for your guys' support, and again, your continued prayers. Just want to say that it's good to be back home again. Also, um, we are going to have some special music today. Um, as I said earlier, one of our very own deacon, uh, David Atkin, is going to be bringing the message today. And we're going to have some special music, um, Aunt Rose and, um, and Audrey. Um, but we do, Miss Eloise is just coming in as we speak. But um, God has been speaking and working with Miss Eloise over the last year or so. And um, Miss Eloise does have a testimony that she wants to share with us. First of all, I would like to say that I'm a blessed person. And, and uh, I, I'm t I'll tell you a little something about me. Most of you know me. But um, first of all, I had to have a shunt put in my brain to drain the fluid um, from my brain um, to my stomach. And Elvin and I have a different opinion on that. I told him because I was so smart. He said he didn't know about that. <laughs> and um, but... Um, then um, I've had two strokes. Um, I lost over 50% of hearing in, uh, um, in one of my strokes. And I have um, difficulty um, with balance. And uh, then there's... Um, I've... Um, I've had um, a hip replacement, shoulder, um, knee replacement, both shoulders were replaced. I've had, um, I'm just, just trying, just trying to um, tell you a few things. 
I've had two heart valves. I've had um, um, gallbladder surgery. I've had, um, okay, um, as you can see, I'm, I'm not nervous at all, <laughs> but um, of everything, I've been blessed about the people around me, some I didn't even know. Um, and, um, like, I'd like to mention, like, Lisa, before I even knew who she was, that she was a blessing to me. But you don't realize how fortunate you are and how blessed you are and until you just look around you. Look at the people around you. Just just take a good look. Look 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 now. Look at who's next to you. Reach out and touch them and let them know that you're there for them and if they need you. And not only them, if you see someone that needs help, if you see someone that you don't know, and especially if you don't know them, and, you, and they need help, reach out a hand and um, be there for them. You know, God didn't put us here just for ourselves. He put us here to, to be for everyone. He put us here to spread the gospel. And by spreading the gospel, we spread ourselves too much, not the gospel. And let me tell you something. When we reach out, I can reach out and touch like this. But when we reach out and touch and spread the gospel, that's when we are really reaching out. And um, when um, you, and you pray for people, you know, just because you can't see anything wrong with them, it doesn't mean that it's not wrong, something wrong. And sometimes the hurt inside is much worse than the hurt you see on the outside. And I'm going to tell you something. When um, I've lost a lot, when you think about loved ones and you think about th the different things, but I've gained a lot. I've been blessed a lot. And sometimes we just don't stop and recognize our blessings. Just reach out and touch somebody. Reach out and let them know that you're blessed. And pray for people. You might pray for you, you pray for the ones you know and all, but you just reach out. And I'm gonna tell you something. Um, I know I don't reach out enough. I don't do enough and when I get up in the morning I've got to wait a minute and see if I'm going to be able to stand up and sometimes after I'm standing up or I'm in the house standing up I've got to call Elvin and get him to help me get from one place to the other you, you just don't know but you reach out and you be there. Be there for the known and the unknown. And I'm going to tell you something. You'll be blessed. And uh, you be, make sure you're a blessing to someone else. Now, I, I want to... I 
I want to just say that I know that I am well blessed. And I hope that you can look around you and realize that you are blessed. Father God, we thank you this morning for sending that faithful servant to us this morning to sing praises in honor of you. We heard the struggles that our sister's been through. We also heard, dear God, of her acknowledging your blessings that have cast down on her. We heard that challenge, that charge that our sister put out before us to be a shining light that others may see you in us. She challenged us to pray for our brothers and our sisters, dear God. She's told us that each day is a struggle for her, dear God, and you know that. But she still gives you the honor and praise that you so truly deserve. And may that encourage us on our bad days to think of the struggles that this sister's going through, but knowing she knows who's got her back. She knows from whence her blessings are coming from. Father God, I thank you for your presence here this morning. I thank you for all we've heard and all we've, we have experienced so far. I thank you and for our offering, dear God. I thank you that um, we see that need to give back to you what it's already yours. And I pray, dear God, that we just absorb all that you have for us today through special music that we'll hear, through the word of our brother David. I know that he spent lots of time in prayer with you and I know we'll truly be blessed by what you want him to say dear God I pray for our pastor Miss Kathy continue to be with them guide them and protect them from the evil one dear God and I pray for the leadership of our church dear God continue to lead and guide us May we listen to you with open ears and understanding hearts, dear God. I pray for our nation, dear God. I pray for our military. I just pray for all the unsung heroes, dear God, and many times we as civilians can't relate to just the sacrifices that they've made. But in saying that, dear God, we thank you for the ultimate sacrifice that you made of, for us. For giving up your son, Jesus Christ, that all who believe may have eternal life. We just thank you for that, and we praise you for that. And once again, I pray that all we say and all that we do in this service, dear God, we put a smile on your face. All these things we ask in your holy and matchless name. Amen. I'm Pastor Jay, and this is my wife, Kathy, for those who may not know. And uh, uh, Rose uh, will be coming a little earlier, uh, a little later, and uh, sharing with us. But right now, uh, Kathy wants to say something, and then I have a couple words as well. Anyone alive when the Twin Towers were attacked 20 years ago will always remember where they were when it happened. On the morning of September 11, 2001, Jay was out on a run, and I 
turned on CNN, and I started to make the bed. The phone rang, and it was our youth minister, Daryl. He asked me, what are you doing? I said, I was making the bed. He asked if I had the TV on. I said, yeah, I just, I just turned it on. He said, what are you watching? I thought, what's this with all these questions? But I said, well, uh, I've got CNN on. It looks like they're showing some kind of preview of a movie, and they're showing uh, some plane hitting the World Trade Tower. And he literally yelled, it's not a movie. It really happened. And I'll, I'll just never forget that because it was, I guess he didn't want to just give me a heart attack by telling me. <laughs> so he was working up to it with these questions. But anyway, the rest of the day, of course, went down in history. I'll never forget it as long as I live. Now, our church in Pennsylvania was about one and a half hours away from Shanksville, which is the place where Flight 93 crashed. So we spoke to the American Red Cross, and they were preparing to host the families of the victims and all the recovery people, and uh, they were all coming to the site. They told us what they needed, and we said, we'll collect, and we'll get the donations, and we'll bring it up. So we got a whole big truckload and a van full of all kinds of supplies. Uh, we had cases of water, cases of juices, paper towels, a whole bunch of different things that they had given us on the list. So then five of us headed to Shanksville, and I remember a field of sunflowers, beautiful farms, rolling uh, hills, uh, red barns and cows. It was very, very beautiful countryside around on the way to Shanksville. The members of the Red Cross were so very appreciative uh, of the donations and of our support. I'll, I'll never forget how nice they were. Now, September 11th had been a beautiful sunny day. Todd Morgan Beamer was on Flight 93 that morning going to a business meeting in San Francisco. He was a regular, all-American nice guy. He played baseball in college. He was a big Bruce Springsteen fan. That's why I like him. And he most of all loved Jesus, and he loved his wife and kids. Uh, he had two sons and a little girl on the way. He had plans with his wife, Lisa, for when he got back from this business trip, they were going to celebrate the 10th anniversary of their first date. Now, remember, in those days, people's bags weren't searched when they got on a plane. You literally just got on. Now, when the hijackers took over the flight, stating they had a bomb on board, it had to be shocking beyond belief, especially when they killed a passenger and slit the throat of one of the pilots. Somehow, through this terrifying chaos, Todd managed to mobilize perfect strangers on that plane to agree that they were going to stand up, band together, and fulfill a plan to storm that cockpit and fight the hijackers. He'd been trying to reach his wife on the phone. He couldn't reach her. But he finally got a GTE operator who got the FBI on the line. Now, when he spoke, was speaking with the operator, she said she would get the message to his wife and kids. He asked her, he said, will you pray with me? He said, Jesus, help me. They prayed the Lord's Prayer together, and others joined in as they recited the 23rd Psalm together. And the last words she heard Todd say were, are you guys ready? Let's roll. They broke into the cockpit with a beverage cart. A melee ensued. The plane was going 600 miles an hour and was flying low when it crashed. At the time it crashed, it was less than 30 minutes from its target, the Capitol. They had learned that the plane had changed course and was heading to the Capitol, so they knew they weren't on their way to San Francisco anymore. 
The first lady, Laura Bush, was at the Senate that day. She was there to speak about education to the senators. So actually, her life also was spared that day. The heroes on Flight 93 before September 11th were just ordinary people, never expecting that God would use them to save others, never expecting they would be giving the ultimate sacrifice for their country. Todd Beamer knew Jesus. Do you? He knew every ounce of leadership and courage he could muster came not from himself, but from Christ. He asked Jesus to help him as he faced certain death, but knew he had to lead and he had to act. I have no doubt Todd Morgan Beamer is with Jesus Christ today in heaven. We must never forget 9-11, but most of all, we must remember who willingly gave his life to save all of our souls, Jesus Christ. You have a personal relationship with Jesus? He's your savior. Do you know him? Ask him to draw close to you. He will, and I can tell you from personal experience, he will draw close if you ask him to. He'll let himself be known. Give him your heart. He will not break it. He'll handle it with care. There will always be some evil people, but Jesus is on your side and by your side. You just have to learn to trust him and, and know that he loves you beyond any kind of love we can even imagine. So are you ready, guys? Let's roll. Todd Beamer was not a soldier in service to the United States of America, although certainly he was in the army of Jesus Christ. And personally, I cannot think of anything more patriotic than taking a stand for the truth and doing the right thing, which always takes enormous courage. So thanks, Kathy, for, for sharing that. I have a question for you, and here it is. How can a God who is all-powerful and absolutely good allow evil? I'm guessing I'm not the only person that's ever asked that question before. Why is there suffering and pain? I'll be the first to admit to you, I don't know. No one does. And if they tell you that they do, they're lying. I, I do know this. God is God. He has always been God. He always will be God. And God does not owe you or me or anyone an explanation of what he allows and what he doesn't allow. For me personally, evil truly is a real problem. But because I have given my life and faith to the Lord Jesus Christ, I know whatever evil that I encounter in this life, ultimately, for me, it is not fatal. If you're a follower of Jesus Christ, that's true for you too. As believers in Christ, we know that God exists, that he is good, and through the work of Christ upon the cross, he has made a way for sinners like you and me out of no way, and through his way for sinners like you and me, we have come to know that he does indeed work all things together for good to them who love him, to them who are called according to his purposes. We may not always understand it. We may not ever even see the result, but we can trust his word to be true because it is. Even in the darkest of nights, the light of Christ will always shine through. 
As the Apostle John uh, wrote, in him was the life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness cannot comprehend it. No matter how dark things may get or things may appear, as a people of faith, we must always, always, always remember that God is in control. The evil that men do does not surprise God in the least. When God allows Satan to light the furnace, always remember that God has his hand on the thermostat, and only through faith in his Son, Jesus Christ, can we know his ultimate victory. Now, <clears throat> I'm not sure who wrote this this poem that I'm about to quote, uh, I don't have a name with it, so I'm guessing it was that ever popular but poorly paid writer anonymous uh, who did it, but he or she said this. I may not know the reason why dark clouds so often veil the sky, but though my sea be smooth or rough, the Lord knows why, and that's enough. I may not know why I'm led so often in the paths I dread, but trusting him, I'll press my way. The Lord knows why I will obey. I may not know why death should come to take the dear ones from my home, but though my eyes with tears be dim, the Lord knows why I'll trust in him. So though I may not understand the leading of my father's hand, I know to all he has the key. He understands each mystery. Oh yes, he knows. The Lord knows why. These things are ordered from on high. Though dark clouds may hide the sun, the Lord knows why his will be done. Beyond the highest star. 
Good morning. I'd like to thank Pastor Jay for giving me this opportunity to share the love of God. I thank uh, Miss Rose and Miss Audrey for singing that for us, playing for that. As a little boy growing up in this church, I would hear that father, Mr. Gus, sing that song. My grandmother was at our house one day. And she was asking, you know, what was the service about? And they shared with her that Mr. Goss had sung that song. And she said she loved when he sang because he didn't sing, he didn't sing for men, he sang for God. So I thank you for that. Let's pray. Father God, we just give you all praise, honor, and glory. Thank you for this day that you created. Realizing that without you, we would not be here today. So we want to thank you. Thank you for the testimony we heard about your blessings. And even through the difficult times that you're still with us. We thank you for your son, for your spirit, for your word. Father, we pray that you would uh, continue to guide us along life's journey. Thank you for the presence of your Holy Spirit here today to lead us in praise and worship of your holy name. We thank you for your son who gave his life that we could have life. Thank you for uh, salvation that you give us through your grace that we don't deserve. Father, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing unto you, my refuge and my redeemer. Father, we pray this in the name of Jesus. Pastor Jay asked me what I'd like to share with the congregation, and I told him I would, and thinking about what would God have me to say, and then at that moment, uh, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, Jesus loves me, and uh, as a young child attending Sunday school, we learned the song, Jesus Loves Me. In that song, it says, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. But to ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me, for the Bible tells me so. And so that's what life is all about, is the love of God, the love of Jesus, what he did to allow us to have that eternal life with our Heavenly Father. And love is the story of the Bible. If you read it from Genesis through Revelation, God is showing himself how he is going to redeem humankind who created, he created in his image from the sinful world. And it's a lot of the Old Testament may be full of a lot of history, the New Testament of things that we don't quite understand. But God gives us his spirit to help us to understand what he's conveying to us in in the word. And throughout that, it exhibits his love. And that love that God has is through his son, Jesus Christ. In John 3, 16, I think we all know that. It says, God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him should not have perished, should not perish, but have everlasting life. So what does that love look like? Uh, The world's definition of love is a little bit different than what God's definition is. Uh, We may use the word love to describe various things. Uh, Some things that we have affinity for. So we may say, well, I love this food. You know, I love pizza. I love ice cream. I love whatever you want to put in the blank there. Sometimes it may be material possessions that we say we love. You know, the advertising media will tell you what you want. You know, if you have this car or this clothes or whatever it is, then that's where you're going to find your happiness and your fulfillment. So we think that is what we love, but that is not the true love. Uh, We love our family. We love our friends. We love our, our neighbors, our coworkers. 
But sometimes that love is, is conditional. Well, I'll love you if you love me back. I love you if you give me a paycheck. <laughs> I love you if, if you like me and back me in whatever I'm doing. But when those circumstances change, does that love continue to exist? And so, um, but we can find that uh, God's love is unconditional. You know, God loves us more than we could ever imagine. Uh, he can't love us any more than what he already does. He doesn't hold back. He loves us unconditionally. And so when we look at God's love in contrast to the world's love, then we have to be able to, how do we understand God's love? How do we do that? It's, um, he regardless, God loves us regardless of what we do or say. Uh, he can never love us any more than what he does. And he has loved us from the very beginning. You know, if you go back in Genesis, you read where God created man in his own image. And so he wants to, us to share in that love that he has for us. Um, and so how do we see that exhibited? You know, we hear it, we read it, but then we see it lived out in the perfect life that Jesus uh, lived. Jesus taught us about that. He taught us about the love of God. He demonstrated that love of God. You know, in Sunday school lesson this morning, uh, it was, a comment was made about, People will remember or know more about what you do than what you say. And not only did Jesus say it, but he did it. He demonstrated that. Romans 5, 8 uh, says, But God demonstrated his love for us, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And so God did not wait for us to get things right. God does not wait for us to get clean. He doesn't uh, wait for us to determine when he's going to love us. Um, the scripture said, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. You know, that love is a sacrificial type of love. It's unconditional, and it's one that we can not truly understand unless the Holy Spirit reveals that to us. It says, Jesus uh, did not sin, but he took on our sins himself so that we become children of God. This is how we know that Jesus loves us. In 1 Peter 2:24, 24, uh, he said, He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we may die to sin and live for righteousness. And so we think about Jesus, his life here on earth, what he did, what he said, all the miracles he performed, he constantly, if you go back and read, particularly in the book of John, <clears throat> he constantly said he came to do the will of the Father. He didn't come to do his own will. He did what God told him to do. He constantly said, I only do what my Father asked me to do. So how did he know that? He spent time in prayer. If you read in the scriptures that uh, when Jesus had an important event, or something, he would go off and pray. When he ministered to his children, and that was taxing on him from a physical and spiritual standpoint, he would go off and pray. And sometimes he would pray all night. So he, he's so connected to the Father that he knew what the Father wanted him to do. Uh, so how could he, his example, to help us, he died on the cross, and he bore our sin. He did not sin, but he bore our sins. He didn't have to do that, but he knew why he came to earth was to redeem us from sin that we were all born into because of uh, what happened with Adam and Eve. And so he had never been separated from God. And when he was on the cross, and it talked about the darkness that came upon the earth, and how that those sins that we commit, those sins that all of us have committed, that Jesus bore those sins, and that God can't be in the presence of sin, and that he turned his, had to turn his back. So the physical part of it, 
you know, the, the scorching and the beating that he had, the nails through his hands, the, the spear in his side, we can kind of relate to that. But can we relate to the burden of the sin that he had for us? But that's why he did it. He loved us. Uh, Philippians 2.8 tells us, and it says, Being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. So Jesus knew what, what was laid before him, but he chose to continue along that path that he had agreed to. When the night before he was arrested, he was praying with his disciples in the Garden of Gethsemane, and the human side of Jesus was revealed. Uh, he prayed, he said, Father, if there's any other way, let this cup pass from me. But he said, not my will, your will be done. That takes love. You know, he, he had the power to call upon the heavenly host to destroy the world. He could have started it over, but he chose not to. He bore our sins. He loves us. Um, we read and know in John 3, 16, it says, God so loved the world that he uh, gave his only begotten son. But do we really know the experience of his love is the only way we can truly experience that love is by accepting Jesus as our Lord and Savior. In John 4, 6, Jesus was talking about that, and this was toward the end of his ministry, the end of his life, and he was with the disciples and being with the crowds, and Jesus said, well, who do people say that I am? And some of them said, well, you know, you're an apostle, you're the prophet, you're one of the old apostles come back to life. But then Jesus made it personal. He always comes to us at a personal relationship. He said, well, who do you say that I am? And Peter answers, you know, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And so as they were talking about that, and Jesus went on to tell them in John 4, 6, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And when we go through that, understand that, um, we realize how much God does love us through Jesus Christ, how much Jesus loves us. And uh, <clears throat> when we had the scripture, it was in um, Matthew about, uh, I got that a little out of sequence, but when, when Matthew was asking, uh, Jesus asked me, who do I say I am? And Jesus said, if anyone wants to follow him, that we must deny ourselves, take up our cross daily and follow him. So, you know, how do we do that? How do we make that transition to being led of Christ? One of the verses that I, that I like is Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not into your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. So we are so connected to Christ that he is our Lord, then he gives us that direction that we need to follow to get through each day. And so that's how we want to, uh, we want to apply that. Uh, we want to put Christ first. We want to be able to deny ourselves. And that's a hard task because our flesh is, well, my flesh is selfish. <laughs> you know, I want what I want. And to deny myself, then I don't like that. You know, but rebellion is born into us. And, but with Christ, he can transform us. And that's, that's the great thing about it. He doesn't leave us where we're at. He comes in and he transforms us by his love. Uh, we had to be intentional. One thing my brother reminds us of constantly, we had to be intentional about following Christ. Uh, we, we must be intentional about spending time with God. Jesus set that example before us. He spent time in his, uh, with his Father. He spent time with the Word. He knew the Scriptures. It's not just a, well, if I have time today, I'll do that. He was intentional about that. We must be intentional, uh, spending time in fellowship with Jesus. He wants a personal relationship with us. It's not something that's out there that I, that's abstract or far away. He's near to us. 
He wants to have that personal relationship. Uh, we must be intentional about, intentional about communing with the Holy Spirit that lives in us as we have accepted Jesus as Lord. Holy Spirit loves to guide us and direct us, but he's a perfect gentleman. He's not going to overrule us. That would be easy. That would make life easier. But he's a perfect gentleman. And all we have to do is ask him. We have to yield ourselves to him, and he will direct our thoughts and our actions and our minds. We need to spend time reading and studying and living out the word of God. Uh, one thing Pastor Claude Evans used to always remind us after the scripture was read, he would say, bless the reading, the hearing, and the living out of the word of God. And, you know, I would hear and I would read, but I wasn't truly living it out. And it didn't really dawn on to me. Then we started living out when God said, you know, to love others as you want to treat others as you want others to treat you. And you start doing that, then you get to experience the love of God. And then it, the light bulb finally went off. This is what it means about living out the word of God and putting action to that. Um, we need to make God our number one priority. We are to do this. Uh, we are experienced the peace that passes all understanding. And Jesus, again, said he would never leave us nor forsake us. And that peace that he provides is uh, a peace that enables us to be able to function during the storm, you know, as we're going through the fire. The song, you know, there's another in the fire. He's right there with us. Uh, when we're in the middle of the storm, he's right there with us. Uh, when we're on the mountaintop, everything's good. He's still there with us. When we're in the valley, when it's difficult, you know, we can't seem to take another step forward. He is with us. He gives us that strength. He gives us that energy to continue on. Uh, Jesus said in John 16, 33, he said, in the world you will have trouble, but take heed, I have overcome the world. This is why we can overcome things that the world and life throws at us. Uh, we do it through abiding in Jesus. He walks with us through the fire, through the storm, through the disappointments, through the hearts. He is right there with us. When we go back and say, Jesus loves me, and just three simple words, but so impactful in our lives, when we allow Christ to lead us, then we will get to enjoy the peace and the fellowship that he has to offer with us. Life is not going to be perfect. We're still going to have the storms. We're still going to have the fires. We're still going to have the disappointments. But he can give us that peace that regardless of what we're going through, he's going to still be there with us. Um, when we look at uh, uh, in John chapter 3, you know, we read John 3, 16, but how can we experience the love of God is through accepting Jesus Christ. In, in the John 3, 36, it says, whoever believes in the Son has eternal life, but whoever rejects this son will not see life, for God's wrath remains on him. As I mentioned earlier, God, Jesus has taken the sins, our sins upon him, upon the cross. And so as we accept him, God sees Jesus. He doesn't see our sin. But that's where we have to make it a start. We have to decide Am I going to follow Christ? Am I going to give my life to him? Uh, one of the things that uh, the most important thing we could ever do in, in life, the most important things as parents or grandparents we can teach our children is the love of God. Jesus loves me. We associate that song with uh, little children, but it's for bigger children too. Jesus said, unless we become as little children, we can't enter the kingdom of heaven. And so that's where we need to be intentional about seeking and serving him. And, you know, we don't work to get, God, to get God's love. Uh, it's through grace we're saved. It's not by works. But that love and that grace compels us to share the good news. 
as Ms. Eloise shared this morning, the love of God compels her. Regardless of what goes on, she still loves him. She knows he loves her, and she can still praise him. And so, you know, what prohibits you today from giving your life to Christ? Uh, we're going to have a song of invitation just shortly. If anything's weighing on your heart, you know, maybe you already have received Christ as your Lord and Savior, but you want someone to pray with or someone to share with you. Pastor Jay is going to be down. You've got deacons all around that's going to be able to do that. Um, don't hold it in. You know, let God know what you are experiencing. Uh, one of the things Jesus wants to make sure is that we have a personal relationship with him. And Matthew 11, at the end of the chapter, uh, Jesus talks about uh, rest for the weary soul. And he, he talks about having the uh, relationship with us such that uh, it's not hard. He gives us that, that, that strength that we need. In the latter part of the chapter, I'm going to read from the message version, and it talks about a relationship and not religion. You know, we can be religious, but we don't have a relationship. Jesus is about a relationship. He said, uh, are you tired, worn out, burn out on religion? Come to me, get away with me, and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real, a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do things. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me, and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. And that's the promise Jesus gives us. And so today, if you have not made that decision to follow Christ, you know, what is stopping you? Uh, as we play the invitation on him, uh, keep your life to Christ. Don't hold back. You'll never regret it. Uh, just remember, the more you spend time intentional, intentional with Christ and his word and the love of God, then we will understand that Jesus loves me. Thank you. His uh, brother... Uh, Reverend Pete Atkins is going to come and, uh, and give us a benediction in just a, a minute here. But uh... Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for the opportunity to come into your presence this morning, Father, through worship, through the proclamation of your holy word. Father, we thank you for the truth that was proclaimed. Um, Father, we thank you for the fact that there's nothing we can do, Father, that causes you to love us anymore. Is there nothing we can do, Father, that causes you to love us any less? Father, you love us, and that's just um, a characteristic of who you are. But, Father, we have a choice to make. Do we receive that love, or do we reject that love? And so, Father, let us hear the words of Christ as he pleads for us um, to come to him, all who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and he will give us rest. Father, you leave that choice up to us. Um, but Jesus pleads for our souls. He wants us to have rest in him. He wants us to have that personal relationship with him, Father. And he wants us to spend eternity with him. And so for those who are listening who haven't um, made that choice yet, um, we pray that you will. Because there's two people vying for your souls. And one is Satan. And one is Christ. And we pray that you choose Christ. We pray that you choose life. In Jesus' name. Amen.